very much. Gentlemen, sure. thank you very much. I thank you. And uh, we're going to the United States. Revelations about NSA surveillance programs are uh, taking on a new dimension with the latest leaks passed on to the New York Times. They implicate telecommunications companies AT&T and Ver uh, Ver Verizon, uh, with AT&T as a highly collaborative partner of the NSA in collecting data. Shai Ben-Ari has the details. Government surveillance conducted by the U.S. National Security Agency continues to make headlines. Documents leaked by Edward Snowden and published by the New York Times and ProPublica shed new light on the depth of cooperation between the agency and telecommunications company AT&T. The documents reveal the company allowed the NSA access to billions of client emails as well as phone call metadata. AT&T engineers installed surveillance equipment in at least 17 of its Internet hubs in U.S. territory. The emails were accessible to analysts on a keyword search basis. While accessing communications between U.S. citizens would necessitate a special court warrant, if a foreign national was communicating with an American citizen, his or her emails could be accessible even without a warrant, not to mention communications between non-U.S. citizens. I was a critic of the previous administration for those occasions in which I felt they had violated our values. What I have been able to do is examine and scrub how our intelligence services are operating, and I'm confident that at this point, we have struck the appropriate balance. The documents do not refer to AT&T by name, but rather to a partner in a program codenamed Fairview. A range of evidence, including technical terms specific to AT&T, points to the company being the NSA's partner, also confirmed by former intelligence officials to the New York Times. The documents refer to the company being highly collaborative, and commend its extreme willingness to help. They refer to the period between 2003 and 2013, and it is unclear if the same surveillance procedures are still in effect today. For most of that period, General Keith Alexander headed the NSA. There's a lot of people out there screaming and yelling. We're not listening to their phone calls. We're not reading their email. We're defending this country. We'll do it right. We'll hold ourselves accountable. The documents even reveal the NSA had access to the network of the UN headquarters in New York. In reaction to the New York Times story, an AT&T spokesman said the company does not voluntarily provide information to any investigating authorities other than if a person's life is in danger and time is of the essence. There was no further elaboration.